My entitled mother-in-law demands hundreds of dollars from my wife, claiming that my wife owes her that for all the time that my mother-in-law helped out my wife. And I'm honestly so livid by this sense of entitlement from my mother-in-law that I now seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So we are in a weird moment in our lives with my wife's family, specifically with my mother-in-law and her sister. Let's call her Renata. And for privacy, some details have changed. Now, for a bit of background, I have been with my wife for around five years, and we have a three-year old kid who we love like nothing else in this world. When we started dating, she was living with her mom who always controlled her entire life. She couldn't have a personal email and her mom had to receive and open all of her mail. I mean, it was a lot of that kind of garbage. Her mom also always reminded her of how stupid she is and that she needs to get a man with money because she is incompetent and can't make money. Now, my wife tried to go to college, but her mom didn't want to help her pay for it because she thought that she would fail. Meanwhile, her sister got her college paid for without ever having to work. And now that she's graduated, she makes bank. My wife lived with this treatment thinking that this is normal, and she didn't really see anything wrong with it until she met me. No one in her family ever said anything, or even advocated for my wife at all. I mean, no one had the guts to do it, but instead they just avoided problems because they are a family, and apparently family sticks together. And I just hate that mentality. So I came into the picture, and I started to get mad when I couldn't go places because of her mom. I mean, she treated my wife like a middle school girl. She can't go out without doing the dishes, taking the dogs out, as well as cooking and cleaning, giving off the vibes that she's some kind of like Cinderella. Meanwhile, her mom will sit there and watch TV with Renata. She was always condescending to her, and the narcissistic selfish attitude just drained my wife's self-esteem. When it comes to who my wife's mom prioritizes, the most important person in her life is herself, and then her dogs, her boyfriend, my wife's sister Renata, and then lastly, my wife. And then when my wife had our kid, my mother-in-law didn't even want to babysit because she's too tired and doesn't want to work when she's out of work. I mean, she's actually calling my kid work. Plus, she's always putting stuff on my kid's head by saying stuff like, call my boyfriend grandpa, which really upset us and we cut that out right away. I mean, they were only dating a couple of months at the time. So, I got fed up and I talked to my wife and said that we need to distance ourselves. I mean, I just wanted to go no contact, but it is her family and she didn't want to do that which I completely understand. Fast forward a few days and they had an argument on the phone where my mother-in-law was again treating her like she doesn't know what she's talking about and being disrespectful and condescending to my wife. So she hangs up on her mid-sentence and I'm so glad because I've been telling her to no longer take that treatment from her because you know what? Respect is earned and it is not just going to be given just because it's her mom. Well, this made my mother-in-law super mad so she called the both of us almost 20 times. Then her sister sister did the same thing, as well as sending us text messages telling us to apologize to her mom. And this makes sense because my wife's sister was always a mama's girl and is literally just a copy of her mother. My mother-in-law sent a lot of text messages with a lot of BS going on, with the last one saying I am done. And according to my wife, this is something that my mother-in-law always says. I told her, okay then we're done too, for real this time though. I mean, she needs some kind of consequences because she always says stuff to reinforce her narrative and so that she can feel like she's the one in control. Because of this discussion literally yesterday, my mother-in-law texted my wife asking her for the money that my wife owes her. And for a bit of context, I just found out that years ago, my wife couldn't pay her cell phone bill and my mother-in-law helped her out by paying for it. And when my wife got some money, she tried to pay her back, but her mom said no for some reason, but instead just kept paying for the phone. I mean, it was under my mother-in-law's name, so my wife just told her to cancel the line, but she didn't. Then, literally like a year later, she actually asked my wife out of the blue to pay her back for all the help that she provided. And apparently, my wife has been paying for that help ever since. And this is without me knowing because she didn't want to make me more stressed out and mess up my anxiety with the situation. Well, I took her out of my mother-in-law's account a while ago, but she's been paying her mom for like two years now. And her mom said that she owed her something like $900. And at this point, I'm livid. Like, this is why she kept the lineup and didn't want the money. I mean, what in the world is wrong with this lady for her to be demanding this money when she was just trying to help her own daughter? I mean, how can someone be so entitled and selfish to literally write down every penny she used on my wife so she can have ammo to go after her when she needs money? So I grabbed the money that her boyfriend gave us for the wedding, which is about $1,000, and I'm going to give it to her and basically say, consider the debt paid off, and please get lost with your garbage. We're also planning on distancing ourselves even more from her, including not 
allowing her to see her grandchild until she grows up. Now, I know I'm not obligated to give any money since everything was on her name and linked to her bank account, but I don't want to give her any more reasons to stay around with her garbage. So honestly, am I overreacting here? Because at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Yeah, I don't blame you for wanting to go no contact with your mother-in-law. She sounds insane. She literally spent a lifetime of treating your wife like garbage, and now that your wife is out of the house, and she's literally about to live her own life with you, her mom is holding on to the last thread of this stupid sweater just to try and screw you guys over one last time. I mean, personally, if I was in your shoes, I would tell her to get lost and that I'm not going to pay her anything, but also, I think it wouldn't be a bad idea just to give that money back that they gave you. Like, the last thing I would ever want is for that woman to have another thing over me that she can demand later on. So if she really wants that $900 back so badly, then they can have that money back that you were given for your wedding. Because as far as I'm concerned, these are not the kind of people you want to have any debt towards. Because I guarantee you they're going to hold that over your head for the rest of your life. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Am I the Jerk for laughing at my cousin after she had an absolute meltdown after her boss saw her buying toilet paper at Costco? Because now she is incredibly angry with me and she is refusing to talk to me. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay, so yesterday I tagged along with my cousin on her trip to Costco. She has always been very high strung, but for the most part, we were having a nice time. As we were in the checkout line, a very pleasant man in his 50s or 60s said hello, and my cousin introduced him as the man who owns the company that she works for. I sort of stood by as they had a normal small talk, and he even complimented her on helping out with a huge sale, even though she's not in sales, and said that he was still working out what the bonus was going to be, as it looked like it was going to be more than they initially thought. I mean, all in all, it seemed like a great interaction to have with a boss, especially when you see them out in public. Well, shortly after he left, she started almost hyperventilating. She was saying, oh my god, oh my god, I can't believe that just happened. Now, I had no idea what she was talking about, but then she started saying, we have to leave, we have to get out of here, that was horrible. I said, I have $300 worth of groceries and I can't come to Costco, so I can't can't leave. She actually walked away and sat down in the food court, and I was still so lost, but her leaving caused an even bigger scene, because I then had to go find her, because they needed to scan her membership card. She was in absolute hysterics at this point, and even the cashier asked if she was okay, and if they could get her some water. Well, we paid and walked out, and she appeared to be so physically weak, I told her to lay down in the back seat, and I would load everything and drive. As I was driving, I finally asked her what was going on, And that's when she screamed at me and said, My boss just saw me buying toilet paper. Do you know how humiliating that is? Now, I actually thought I misheard her, so I said, Wait, this whole thing is over buying toilet paper? She screamed at me, Yes, I'm probably going to get fired. I then asked her if she seriously thought that she was going to get fired for buying toilet paper. Well, she said yes, and that she can't let anyone at work know her private life. I told her I doubt he even noticed, and I also doubt he thinks about her bathroom habits. But he also probably assumes that she goes to the bathroom like everybody else in the world. Then she screamed back at me and said, your job is so easy. You couldn't possibly understand how much pressure I'm under at work. I'm gonna lose it. At this point, I lost it and I started laughing harder than I knew was possible. Not only was it ridiculous, but I felt like she was attacking me and instead of going back and forth, I felt finding the humor was the only way to go. She then said to me, you're actually laughing at me. You are such a jerk. I do you a huge favor and now you're laughing at me? Well, she got to my house and dropped me off and then sped off with my groceries. I then called my aunt to make sure they at least put my food in the fridge, but my aunt said my cousin overreacted and that I'll probably need to apologize to be able to get my stuff. So honestly, am I the jerk in this situation? Because I seriously don't think I did anything wrong. No, you didn't do anything wrong. Your cousin is insane. Like seriously, who gets upset over someone having toilet paper and buying toilet paper? Like everybody uses the bathroom. That's like the least embarrassing thing on planet Earth. And I kind of see what the original poster is talking about. Like their cousin really does sound very high strung and just like over dramatic. Like the way they were acting in Costco was so performative. It was almost like intentional as if she's trying to say, oh man, look at me. What was me? I'm going to get fired. But like, seriously, if you get fired for having toilet paper and using toilet paper, then that job clearly sucks because I guarantee you that everybody in that store uses toilet paper. Like seriously, what a stupid thing to get upset over. So no, you didn't do anything wrong. And I really think that your cousin was acting insane. Am 
I the jerk for stringing my family along about going on vacation with them, despite the fact that I have no plans on going, as I'm sick of always having to babysit all of their kids? Here's what happened. So I want to start off by saying that I was the surprise child of the family. I am 10 years younger than my youngest sibling, meaning that my brothers, sisters, and parents used me as an unpaid babysitter a lot when I was growing up so I could bond with my nieces and nephews. Whenever a family vacation rolls around, my folks and my siblings go have fun and leave me with all the kids since I can't go to some of the places they go to, or I'm told that I probably wouldn't be interested in doing some of the stuff that they want to do. I made up my mind over Christmas that I was done doing the babysitting, so I'm going along with the plan. I am helping my folks research some great local restaurants in the city where we are going, and I'm helping my siblings find cool and interesting things for all the kids to do, and it really will be an amazing holiday, but I'm definitely going to be blowing this one off. I am going to university out of state in the fall. I have a partial scholarship and money from my grandparents for my education and my future. My parents cannot hold anything over my head, and I'm actually going to go on my own vacation with a couple of my friends. Now, my parents don't mistreat me or anything like that, but they are just very old, and my siblings are from a different generation than I am. My oldest brother is literally old enough to be my father, and they treat me more like a child than a sibling. And I'm kind of interested to see how their vacation goes without me along. Obviously, I cannot help them pre-plan childcare, and the reservations at some of the restaurants do not include me or the kids. Also, the days they are having adult outings, they have planned some stuff for the kids and myself to be elsewhere. My oldest niece is only 15 years old, so I don't think they will leave her in charge, but they have been raising her to take my spot when I go to school, so maybe she'll be the next one to be messed over, but honestly, that's not really my problem. Now, I have been clear several times in the past that I do not want to babysit. I have asked for payment, and I've been told that my being on vacation is my payment. I do love my family, but I don't like them much. Like I said, my parents are old, and if they weren't Catholic, they probably wouldn't have had me, if you know what I mean. And my siblings do not treat me as an equal, which I mean is fair. I am 17, and I'm just finishing high school. They're all working professionals, and we don't really have much in common. And again, I love my siblings, but they don't treat me like an adult like they do with my sister. I'm more of like an older cousin. And lastly, I have spent a long time thinking about this, and I'm really okay with just completely screwing them all over. We went on family vacation to Spain last summer and I didn't get to do anything that I wanted to do. And this is because I was watching the kids. So I missed out on so many things going on in Madrid. And that truly was the final straw, basically convincing me that I will never babysit for them ever again. Honestly, good for the original poster for making a stand. It really seems like they took advantage of you at every chance they could get. And that's really just not fair in my opinion. Like I can't stand when you're stuck with all these kids and the parents of these kids kids just drop them off at your feet and they just can't wait to run away. Like, I totally understand wanting time to be away from the kids, but seriously, you're doing this at the expense of your sibling. And for them to expect you to do this every single time with no compensation, in my opinion, is just completely uncalled for. So I truly hope you have an amazing holiday with your friends, because based on what you've described and the way that your family treats you, I think that you absolutely deserve it. Would I be the jerk if I bought my own designer handbag that cost me upwards of $3,000? Because right now my husband is not happy with me and at this point I seriously don't know what to do. Okay, I'm a 29 year old female and in the last few months I've been wanting something nice for myself since I realize I'm a lot older now and I have been both working and saving so much. I don't own anything designer and any purses I have are from 2014 all the way up until 2018 and they're $300 or less and I feel like now is a good time to treat myself with one nice handbag. My husband however is not a fan of this idea and literally gets upset when I talk about wanting a designer handbag that does cost upwards of $3,000. I've brought it up multiple times, and he will tell me that I'm being irresponsible, that it's a huge red flag even for wanting one, and that he doesn't want to talk about it anymore. He said a financial advisor would say this is a bad idea. Over the last three years, our combined household income has always been around $300,000, and we both got increases recently that'll now put us at around $365,000 thousand dollars a year. Our monthly expenses are low and we have been contributing over half of our incomes to retirement accounts. Both of our companies offer additional retirement accounts that we absolutely take advantage of. We don't have any kids. We have no personal debt. We do have two mortgages. One house is currently being rented out for two thousand dollars a month and the house we live in is two thousand one hundred dollars a month. Now I cleared all my debt in February of 2020 on my own and I mainly spend money on food. I have always worked full time and I contribute
contribute to our joint bank account. I have six figures saved for retirement and it's still growing. And I also have $25,000 in a personal investment account before marriage. And you can imagine how much he has saved that I have no desire to even touch. So honestly, would I be the jerk if I used $3,000 for my own personal investment account just so I can buy a designer handbag for myself? He claims that I want to buy it using his money, but I think if I use my own money, it would be a good solution. What should I do? Honestly, I don't think there's anything wrong with buying something that you want to buy. It sounds like you're not hurting for money, and it sounds like you have everything like figured out financially, so if you want to buy a $3,000 designer handbag, then go for it. And your husband's completely wrong, by the way. That's not a red flag. That's like you wanting to buy something that you like. People spend that much on like computers or like televisions or like car parts. Just because they have it, it doesn't mean that's like a red flag or anything like that. It just means they had the expendable income and they're like, yeah, I'm going to buy it because I want it. And in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with that. So no, you would definitely not be the jerk for buying a designer handbag. And I think the fact that you're buying it with your own money, in my opinion, is the best course of action you could possibly make. Am I the jerk for refusing to share my huge inheritance with my step siblings? Because after I said no, my mom and her husband got really upset with me. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So I'm a 17 year old male and I found out only a few weeks ago that my dad left me a lot of money in a trust. Like it's such a crazy amount that I didn't really believe it at first, but it's all true. The reason is, is that my dad had inherited from both his parents already. And he also inherited from the only two uncles he had as well. And one of them was very successful and had a business. This was all explained in a letter my dad wrote to me. He had the trust set up before he came into most of the money, but he found out his cancer was incurable. So he decided to put it all aside for me once all medical bills were paid off for him. My parents were separated but not legally divorced when my dad was sick and then eventually passed away. But they weren't living together or as a couple for about a year. And this was 10 years ago. My mom found out about the money because she read the letter that he sent to me about the issue. Then she suddenly insisted that she was joining me to meet with the lawyers to discuss this. When my mom learned about the money, she told her husband and suddenly the money became a very touchy subject. I mean, I can't touch it until I'm 19 with the way my dad set it up. So I have some time to deal with this, but my mom and her husband want me to share the money with my step siblings. The money is enough where even if I pay for college and buy a house, I would have money left over. The way the trust works is that I was also told it's also getting interest, which my dad had intentionally set up. My mom and her husband have struggled financially for years. They started dating when his youngest kid was one years old. His wife had passed away and he was going through a legal battle with the mother of his oldest and his oldest is in therapy because of some issues with her mom. Also, his youngest was born with some medical issues and has a lot of doctor appointments as a result. So as you can probably guess, between everything, money was really tight. We live paycheck to paycheck and I work to make my own life a little more comfortable. But we had no college savings or anything before this. My mom and her husband drained their own bank account to keep a roof over our heads. Now, this has all been brought up to me as a good reason why I should do this. My mom told me it was selfish for dad to put it all away solely for my future and he should have been thinking about raising me as well. She told me that I might not call her husband dad or his kids my siblings, but we are a family and that this family has been through so much together and we have struggled for so long that it really would be good and generous for me to do this. I told her, well, it's not like I can access the money now, but she said, no, but when I do, I should set up accounts for my three step siblings so they have a better chance at college and if not college, the chance to have a step up when starting their life. Despite all they're trying to talk me into it, I just said no. I told them I wasn't going to share the money and my mom was so mad at me, but it was nothing compared to how mad her husband was. They told me to quit being selfish and start acting with compassion. So honestly, am I the jerk in this situation? Because right now, I seriously don't know what to do. No, in my opinion, I don't think you're the jerk here. I think it's completely reasonable to keep the money for yourself and help out your future. But also, if I was in your shoes, I would be planning out how soon I can move out of that house. The fact that they know about this money, first of all, is really unfortunate because this could have been something that you could have kept private and like not told anybody about, which is something I totally would have done, by the way. And now that they know you have a lot of money waiting for you when you're 19 years old, they've now essentially turned on you and they want you to give over some of that money to your step siblings, which, by the way, I don't think there's anything wrong with you keeping it. Like at the end of the day, this is your dad's decision to give you all of the money and it really is up to you how you want to use it. So if you wanted to keep it, you're 
well within your right to do that, but I can seriously see this being dragged out for a very long time, and I can see your mom and your stepdad guilt tripping you for the next two years until you have access to it. And that sounds like a miserable way to live your day to day life. Like, I wouldn't like that at all. I would be very miserable living in that kind of situation. And hopefully, you can see what might be coming your way potentially from your mom and your stepdad. Because I've said it once on this channel, and I'll definitely say it again when someone wins the lottery or comes across a lot of money in their life, people around you can definitely change. And it sounds like your mom and stepdad have done just that. So, hopefully, all this works out for you. Because the way your mom and stepdad are trying to guilt trip you right now, in my opinion, is completely uncalled for. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.